8 o'clock a.m. And the woods are coming to life. Got up at about 4.15 this morning. Get ready and head on out. Daybreak wasn't until 6.39. So when it started, the light started trickling in. I got here. It took me about 45 minutes to set up. 15 to walk to the location. Another 45 kind of set up. Getting in quietly and everything. Got the squirrels over there. They're really being a hole in the tree there. And this is where I'm hunting. So, let's see what steps out. skipping by. Let's see what wants to stop and feed. So far I've only seen two deer. stopping her or anything like that because I want them to come here and relax willingly I'm here on the feed lot and just start grazing that's when you get the best shot I think they're all rushing you into bed or something I'm not sure
12.30 in the afternoon. No more deer. I heard somebody vacuuming earlier. Like, really? What are you vacuuming? I have a plane. Yeah. I haven't seen... I haven't seen anything else. I mean, no more than squirrels. But at least the sun is up. I'm not shivering anymore. So that's good. I'm gonna be here another two hours and 30 minutes. I want to get out of here by three o'clock. Hopefully something comes along like now. But if not, I just have to come back another day. Mm. Yeah. I just gotta be aware of my shadow down here. Other than that, uh, let's see what comes in. So, I've been here in a tree stand, browsing on the phone and looking at squirrels and eating snacks and dozing off. So, hopefully one shows up with the next hour. I plan to get out of here by 3, 3.30. A buck got walking under my stand, but I didn't get a good look at the body or anything. I just saw the antlers, and I think it was like an eight point. So, every little movement now, I've been on edge ever since. Uh, to know that there is a buck in the area, and I'm just like, oh, come on, back out. Like, he comes, but he doesn't pass my stand, he stops and then turns right back around. Smell me or what? I know I bathed in scent killer and I even sprayed myself down. I'm about 12 feet off the ground. So I'm like, what happened? Oh. He's like the first deer I've seen in hours. I didn't have time enough to grab my bow when I recognized that it was a buck because I didn't want to spook it. So I was like just standing still, patiently waiting for him to step out even more and go past my stand into the field there. But he didn't. But I hope he comes back out within the next uh, few minutes or hour or so. Who knows? So it's just a little bit before 5:30, and uh, decided to wrap it up and call it a day. Uh, I saw in total like five deer. So it was pretty live. It was pretty live around. So all right, well, it's like spilled milk. I have another day, so. Hopefully Wednesday will be a lot better for the simple fact. Um, Wednesday is going to be a high of 48. And Tuesday, I believe all day or Tuesday night, is going to rain. So 9 times out of 10, they're going to be hunkered down for that rain. And usually after the rain, it's always something like, wow, you know. So 
pretty much that's it we'll see what's going on and uh you know stand about seven it's about four now almost i only seen three deer today and that was two on the road as i was coming in and one about nine o'clock was coming in here i think he was a buck my um yearling buck the other day i saw that um eight pointer walk about 10 feet from my stand actually 10 yards from my stand and I was given a tip to put out some doe estrus. I didn't really care if I got the buck or not, but I did want to see if it'll work. So I put out the doe estrus. Four time on the ground, walked in, left the trail, left it out there in my sight, sight line. So hopefully he could have lined up with it. Nothing. I'm, I kind of knew it would have spooked the does that were in the area. Um, and honestly, I should have just left well enough alone. I know this area gets deer, but since putting out the estrus, I think it may have just spooked a lot of the does. Therefore, the bucks follow. So, yeah, the yeah, estrus didn't work. I mean, sometimes some people swear by it. It works when it works. Other times it don't. It is still the rut. Um, but I don't think it's in favor of the girls. It's an unfamiliar scent. They're not going to want to be in the area. You know, there's probably some deer around and I just didn't see them. They smoked that and hightailed it out of here. But there was one yearling buck that rushed in and I was trying to set up for the shot he was coming down the way there and i was trying to set up for the shot he saw me right in the crack of that tree and i was like damn 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 i should have waited i was trying to get him before he rushed in too quick i don't know if he was coming to feed or what but he came in like he was ready but saw me and, and spilled milk again. Let it learn, right? I, next 45 minutes, I call it a day. The only thing that's keeping me company is this armadillo down here. It keeps moving in the trees. But really, it hasn't been that much woodland life it's like the birds i've seen a few of them but the squirrels i've seen a few but not as many as when i was out here sunday the temperature is about 46 degrees so it rained yesterday and i was hoping that it'll be high activity in deer today which it probably is it's just they're not in this area and i don't know if it's because of the delicious I put out or I don't know they just didn't want to come around but yeah well that's what I learned that's why I like to just get into the area of my altar and hurry up and wait military style so, got a couple more days left for this WMA um, but hopefully I can get back out here either Friday or Saturday. I was really hoping to get one early in the week. That way I could just have the rest of the week to age it and, and go off to the other WMA I wanted to hunt. But I don't know. I might just end up going to that other one. 
We'll see. But until then, I'm signing off for today. Yeah. It notoriously come crashing in. Okay, so it's just shy of 8 o'clock, uh, November 16th, and I'm up here in the tree stand. I got here a little later than I wanted to, um, but it's all right. I saw on the road, I saw three deer coming in, and as I'm walking to my stand, I see another deer um, at a licking branch. So I don't think it saw me because... Um, it was heading in a different direction than where I was, but I was still, still hunting my way in to this cove area. So the deer was actually straight up ahead there and it was on a licking branch as I'm coming from this path that goes around this way to come up into this cove and I believe it was either going that way there's a trail that goes straight ahead or it was coming back towards this way but either way I don't think that I uh, I don't think that I spooked it uh, if anything that's spooking the deer right now I hear a lot of dogs and a lot of gunshots and I'm not sure if it's um, some of the folks in the dove field or or what so, yeah, the dogs aren't making the morning easy. I mean, there's pros and cons to it. Possibly it'll spook a lot of deer, you know, spook a lot of deer to come forward my way. But on the flip side, it could cause them to want to bed down and seek safety where they know they'll be safe. So, I don't know. I'm really hoping to get something today. Day three. Day three here at Joe Kurtz. Second week. Day three. It's the last week of the season for this WMA. I absolutely love hunting here. So, cross my fingers. As you can hear, there are dogs in the distance. And just as the dogs started barking, three deer came around the corner. They were coming around the freaking corner. And 20 seconds after the dogs went off, there they go. And spooked them back into the woods. <sighs> Man, this is horrible. As soon as the dogs went off, I picked up my bow and stood up because I knew whatever was in the area was going to run this way. But I couldn't get a good shot at them. Well, here's the waiting again. Yeah, I think I'm going to actually go ahead and move. There's a field just over yonder. I hear the dogs as well as the dog's owner and gunshots. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know if it's small game season or it can't be doves. It's not even a dove field. I don't know. But literally this morning, it cost me a deer. Hunting with dogs is fine. It's annoying. Well, I think this area is going to be a dud for a while. 
it would be wise if I go ahead and change locations. Somebody was telling me about a nice spot over yonder, so I'm gonna go and check it out. Maybe I'll have a lot more luck than over here. So, it sucks that I had to make the last minute call to get up and move. There's a field right over here. So, I had the dogs not going off then they probably would have just eased on in there and started grazing or whatever and carried on with regular life. But it was a tough decision to get up and move. I guess I, guess I can look at this as a blessing in disguise, maybe. I'm actually heading over to an area that somebody else told me about. Uh, it's the guy that actually helped me with my first deer um, drag it out the woods earlier this season he was here a couple of days ago and he was telling me about this spot over here said that when he was there he saw 12 deer hopefully I have some good luck there so I'll let you know So I just got set up in my new location. It's not bad. I like it, but it's now 11:22. So I just lost pretty much an hour and an hour and a half uh, of just sitting there and waiting in my old location. And the most aggravating thing, I don't even hear the dogs anymore. That sucks. Like this morning, they were just firing off one after the other. And when, just when I thought it was getting quiet, they start right back up again. And I'm like, oh, if this is going to be an all-day thing. So I decided to just go ahead and move locations. And to a certain degree, I'm kind of glad that I did. I do like this area. Um, here. See, it's pretty wide open. And what I like most, there is like a, a water area. Look like a hog wallow or whatnot over on this way. You can probably see a little bit of the water, but it extends outward there. So it's like a little swampy area. Um, I've heard there are wild hogs here at this WMA, and I wouldn't doubt it. But I didn't really see any signs like rubs against the uh, trees or anything. Um, rub marks. What well, is pretty... It's pretty decent temperature out. I don't think that they would need to come and wallow, but definitely during the summer, this is a hot location, looks like. Also, I have all this open space, so I can see either direction of what's walking through the woods. And it's just on the um, other side of the bedding area. Um, after I checked hunt stand, that's what it says. So I got all this. There's a heel, obviously, over there. That's kind of a disadvantage to me because whatever's coming down that hill will probably see me as they're coming down. But uh, other than that, got some white oak uh, acorn trees around. And the reason I picked this location is because um, I saw a little bit of deer tracks and some scat. So that's why I chose this spot right here. The scat was pretty fresh, looked pretty, uh, you know wet so did the deer track had a little bit of um, you know sharp edges to it so I figured this might be a good little traveling route that they like to come through so I'm gonna wait around here for a little bit to you know see what comes by hopefully it's something good something favorable 
And, um, yeah. And in the meantime, I guess I'll snack on some stuff. Try not to crunch too loud. Oh, it's going on one o'clock. It's about 12.45 or so here. But the temperature is um, about 50, almost 50 something degrees. So it's not that cold out. It's actually pretty nice. Though I'm still gonna stay bundled up. I like the cold, but I don't like to be cold, so. But that's about to change because since it's such a nice day out, I decided to do some real hunting, you know. I know when I hunt with my recurve, um, I did a lot of still hunting last year. So that's kind of the real way to go. The pursuit. So, yeah, I don't feel like sitting in a stand all day. So all I'm hearing over here is sticks falling and trees too. A tree just fell over that way. So nothing but birds too. I'll get here and stretch my legs. It's a pretty nice day. Uh, try to turn this in my favor. I'm gonna actively go and find these game animals. Hope to bring one down. This WMA is really good, but man, the past couple of days has been rough. So I'm going to try to change my own luck instead of waiting for it to come to me. And if it doesn't work out today, I guess I'll give Charlie Elliott a try for tomorrow. So hmm. I made it back to my car and uh, I'm going to take a little bit of a siesta like some of the other hunters around. Uh you know, they said that tree stand was 20 pounds. Why does it feel like 40? I guess when you wear it long enough, it's like, oh my God, get it off of me. I didn't see anything going out. Um, actually, back over here at the same area, I'm going to walk my way through here in a little bit. But for right now, a little bit of a snack. I've really taken a liking to this flavor here. This coconut and uh, pineapple. So... Yeah, I'm going to put the boots to the dirt in a little bit. For right now, I'm just going to chill. I'm on my way over to the other side of the WMA where I used to hunt. That other hunter was right. This is definitely the freshest I've seen in a long time. I mean, I saw, I saw some over at the other location, but it was all scattered out. But these droppings are pretty much together and it looks like I'm on this trail. So I'm going to keep still hunting through, being careful of my steps and everything. Hope that I run into something. So I'm briefly just going to take cover behind this fallen branch here. I think that'll cover me from behind. 
In the meantime, I'm looking down, kind of in a little valleyway. Um, just looking down to see what's moving over yonder. There's a bedding area behind me too. So no doubt they'll probably come up and through this way. I saw a second. I saw a second. Uh, pile of scat just on the other side of that branch over there over the branches I saw a couple of deer as I was coming in I spooked them they were running in the opposite direction after that but it's four o'clock I'm gonna I'm gonna see what comes this way. Start making it out of here by what? 4.30 or so. Around this fallen tree here, I've seen a lot of aggressive uh, pollen marks. So, I'm not sure if they were made by deer. It would be a lot bigger if it was made by deer. But this one looks like it for sure. So, I was still hunting my way back to the road and I came up on one, but the thing is, he didn't, he didn't uh, spook because of me, he spooked because of a car coming by, he was crossing the road, and he went and took refuge, when he took refuge over um, the thicket here until the car or whatever danger passed, but then he came right back out and trace this tree line here. I was standing right there and he came out so fast. He came out so fast, looking around, everything like that. And he stopped maybe 30, 30 yards from where I was, where you see this arrow. And I fired, but damn, I should have waited. I should have waited until he got in a better clearing. I was trying to grunt to stop him. At one point that I had a good clearing, but he kept on going. And I grunted again, he stopped. And well, he stopped in a place where it wasn't favorable for me. But you know, I don't think I could have shot him anyway because he was a spike. And this WMA only called for quality bucks, so. Little spike, little yearling, probably wouldn't have done good. But he still didn't see me. Because when I fired the shot, he just ran. He just ran, tail tucked. I don't think he spotted me or, any, or suspected any kind of danger. Maybe just a stick or something to him that spooked him. Well, the beauty about bow hunting, you get a second try. So it's now 5.13, 5.13 in the evening. I think I'm going to end up hunting last light over here, but definitely an early morning spot. I'm going to look for a tree on my way out. It's about 8.10 in the morning. I just got settled in. I wanted to get here in the stand before daybreak, but I knew that wasn't going to happen. This is a completely different area for me. I didn't go back to the second one or the first one that I prepped for. So this is just behind the large dove field a little off Germany, though. But you can see it's a thick line of trees in the distance that's acting as a bedding area or a cover for the 
the hardwoods and pines all around. I have a good amount of open space. A really good amount of open space. I came in through that way. Just off of a trail. So, it took me a little bit to try to find an area that I would have been comfortable hunting. I'm still not quite sure or familiar what comes through here. I haven't seen any kind of deer signs, but um, they usually use these trees as cover or a travel route through the day. So it's a pretty good bet that I see something, though I didn't see anything coming in, um, driving into the WMA. I usually do. You'll see like deer off on the road looking at the cars that pass by. I didn't see any of that today. So after those dogs yesterday, it was like a lot. Everything just went quiet. So I'm going to do my best through the day to do the same. Keep quiet. Don't need to be spooking anything else. Yeah. Supposed to be a high of 60, a high of 66 or something like that today, but it's about 40 some degrees right now. But yeah, other than squirrels, the morning has been pretty still. These things have been keeping me entertained. I don't know. Those are some big ass squirrels, though. I don't think that's a squirrel. Uh, it looks more like a weasel or a ferret or something. Well, turns out that Georgia has a couple of variety of squirrels, about four. You have the common gray squirrel, you have the flying squirrel, you have the fox squirrel and another one but the big one that I saw was the fox squirrel and that's what it looks like right here and a little black mask on a little bit of white going down the side and he was huge I was like wow so look at me learning stuff just sitting here I hope you don't smell my snacks. It's a little too quiet over here. I'm gonna go find some action. Just got out of the tree. I'm actually about to head over to that tree line. You can see I got something here. A bit of scat covered on the ground here. Deer droppings. 
it's a, it looks probably a day or two old. But I mean, they do come through this area. But I'm going to still set up perhaps somewhere in between here as well as as well as the thicket area that way I get best of both spots it's acorns here yeah but see another thing it's really no telling what time of day they come through I mean, it could be anywhere through the night. It could be as early as the day. Or late in the evening. A few little scrape marks there. And then pawing up the ground. Okay. Wow, that field is really, really green. That's amazing. But this time of year, it's like, what are they doing to it? Anyway, I need to be heading back that way. I remember that fallen tree from yesterday. Actually, I'm on the other side of where I stopped from it. The road is back there. That's where I need to be setting up. That's where I had a shot at that buck yesterday. It was actually pretty frustrating that I missed, but at the same time, I'm glad that I did because, well, he was a little spike, and I found out, yeah, we really can't shoot little spikes here at this WMA, so I would have been in big trouble had I done it, but like I say, I'm a meat hunter, I hunt more so for meat than I do for a trophy or anything, if I get a big buck, that's great, but I mean, if I don't, there's plenty of does with plenty of nutritious meat on their bones, so, you know, if I can make a meal out of it, I'm taking it. So, I'm going to still hunt up this way, set up my stand. freaking way. I did not see this yesterday. I walked right past this area and I didn't see this. This is a gravestone in the middle of the woods on a WMA. There's a couple more ahead over there. That ball and tree is where I was standing. I see it right behind the fallen leaves there. I mean, I saw this, but I didn't think nothing of it. I didn't, I thought it was just a rock like those other rocks over there. But this is Sarah Martin Boone, 1871 to July 2nd, 1936. She's just in the middle of the woods. I wonder what's the history of this place. There's some others over here. I know I passed by. There's a... Where'd it go? There's like a... Uh, huge fireplace pit of some sort. I just passed it over yonder over there. I wonder if this was somebody's house or used to be somebody's establishment. There are some other graves over here. I passed by this last night or yesterday evening. I didn't really think too twice about it but I should have known. These stones look a little too perfect to be just ripped regular stones and now I'm over here curious Joe Brown Alexander 
1909, this person died. 1909. Wait, no. 19. I can't really make that out. Well, I don't know. Rest their soul, I guess. Alright. There's another. Oh, wow. Another tombstone and another one. This is a burial ground. I'm gonna really go ahead and head out that way and hope nothing follows me home. God, send my angel to protect me. Keep whatever, whatever over here, over here. And forget steel hunting, let's uh, get to walk in here. Back to the land of the living here. I remember this. I do remember passing by this thing. Whatever it is. So, I'm on familiar path now. That didn't take long. Oh my god. I hope I'm not filming my episode of Lost Tapes or some shit. <laughs> I watch those shows where people be like filming themselves in the woods and doing stuff. And then something they end up catching on camera they didn't know they caught. They look back on the tapes or somebody find the tapes. I'm like, what was this? Death Raptor or Chubacabra or something. Ay, ay, ay. It's now 12 noon and I was actually planning to do a little bit of still hunting over at the other side around this time. But this is the area from last night where I had a shot at that little small spike. Um, and then, ah, I got a spider on my head. Ah. ah daddy long legs, they're everywhere. Eh. Okay, put that in the blooper. You know what, perhaps I should go ahead and set up here. And I don't see too many decent, good, straight trunk trees around. They're either all twisted and crooked, got vines going up them, or too small. Guess what? I just saw two deer that ran the other way. And not just a couple of seconds after I stopped recording, they last a little bit. <sighs> well... So, they're deer in the area. Just can't see them, but they can definitely see me. Once again, I'm in a dilemma. The dogs started barking again. And even if I'm not in the first location where they were yesterday, they're now over here in the location that I'm hunting now. On the other side of the WMA. I Okay, you know, I, I'm bad at pinpointing those things that meant to be kind of moments. So maybe is it meant for me to go back over there to the other side? Or should I say, I just found some rub marks. Look at that. Just found some nice rub marks on that tree, that tree, and that tree. Way in the back. And I saw two deer when I was coming this way and, and they hightailed it in the opposite direction. But then there's another field on the other side of that. So they, the dogs may end up moving over there that field later on or the rat, rabbit hunters might go over there. So I'm really kind of in a bind don't exactly know where else I could. This place is kind of surrounded by fields, so I don't think I could escape it even if I wanted. Alright, so it's 2.30 in the afternoon, and 
and I'm just gonna wait it out over here in this area it's the final area and see what comes this way I'm exhausted it's been four days four days throughout this week I had what eight days to hunt the WMA I'm gonna sleep so good after this It's 4.30 and the night is setting in, light's fading pretty fast. <sighs> Today's been just like Wednesday, a dud day. I got a glimpse of a deer and that was it. Nothing more, nothing less. So they get to live another day. And I get to starve another night. But that's, that's nature. You know, everything is honestly give and take. Just been hearing a lot of squirrels thrashing around. But everything is a give and take system. What's kind to one is cruel to another. But it's the ones that keep going another day hold up this hasn't been the best week in hunting but it's not going to be the last week but I think I'm about ready to call it a night go ahead and enjoy the rest of my day and let the deer live free all right hello wild people so if you've made it to the end of this video, you would see that I didn't get a deer. Shocker, right? Although the title I see is very misleading, but um, yeah, that's pretty much the realistic uh, aspect of it. You know, as you saw, I, four days, four days out there in the wilderness and I didn't get a single deer. I saw them, but couldn't get a good shot at them. And it goes to show that no matter how well equipped you are, no matter how well prepared you are, I've scouted that area many a times. You've seen the first video when I went to Joe, I actually had a success uh, in that very spot that I ended up in the second time. It was just total chaos this time. So um, it's pretty much the realistic light. You'll spend more time just trying to get get good on it than just actually getting the goods so um yeah i guess one reason i decided to highlight this is because we see so many hunting videos out there where they are just pow 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 you know they're getting it and, and when you get out there you expect to do the same thing but this is what it's like you are just sitting in a tree or in a blind or on the ground hidden you get up early mornings you you know you take a shower and scent killer you have some breakfast you go warm the car up you drive miles out if you have to to a wma only to sit there for however many hours and hope for an animal to show so uh, i once heard this big misconception that hunters kill thousands of animals every day well, as you can see, honey, I don't even see thousands of animals every day when I'm out there. I mean, maybe that's true as a collective group, but it's not true to an individual hunter. So um, it also goes to show that you can be a very skilled, very well-equipped hunter and still have many failures. And I think that that is where you grow. That is where um, you learn from such trials and errors and you get better you know what what's the success without the failures so just very typical things but the important thing i can say is um i spent time in nature you know obviously you can go to a park and just do that without the intent of going to hunt but that also you're getting the food that you need um but you spend time in nature you get to understand the natural process of how this uh how the world is designed it is a beautiful yet cruel world you know at the same time and everything is a balance so um 
yeah that's pretty much what this video was about sorry to drag it out but it's gonna be your life if you're going to be a hunter i mean you might know you might be that hunter that knows somebody that has a whole bunch of land that's fortunate but even if so depending on how that land is managed you might not go home that day with an animal you know or whatever it is you're hunting you may not go home with it you know and that's perfectly all right you just get up do it again and uh hope for the best you know now strategy wise was pretty much the same thing uh although as you saw in the video i uh did try to switch up some of the strategy um of how i can go about but i did have some setbacks that were unforeseen such as the dogs uh the hunting dogs were out there that day and they were just barking up a storm but you know i just had to go off of whatever instinct whatever wits hope for the best and still nothing so hopefully this has been a little lesson if you've made it to the end of this video i really appreciate it leave it a thumbs up share like comment if something you know catches your attention that you want to bring up and let's just continue to grow as a community but other than that i'll see you guys next time but until then eat wild live free